Uh, hello again, my name is Eugenie Chai, the lecturer of Introduction to Neurobiology. This is lecture two, and today we are going to talk about the cells that consist of our nervous system. Um, first of all, um, in our nervous system, there are many cells uh, that consist of our brain and our spinal cord, our peripheral, peripheral nervous system. and um, we are uh, most familiar with a cell called neuron, but neuron is not everything, not everything that consists of our brain. So mainly there are two types of cells. And also, there are many other kinds of cells, such as um, the cells that uh, form the lining of our uh, ventricles, the lining of our uh, blood vessels, and uh, the cells that surround our uh, ganglion, such as things. But we will, uh, for now, we'll uh, not talk about such um, other cells, but we will focus on uh, the two types of cells. So, um, the neuron is the cell that uh, is in the central nervous system and this cell is the main um, for, uh, has the main function of um, transmitting information which is the main function of our nervous system and um, it creates uh, signals uh, so that it can convey to the uh, periphery of our body or convey to another neuron uh, something like that. So this is the main um, part of uh, our nervous system when we focus on uh, transmitting information. However, glial cell, which is not very um, as well known as neurons, um, plays an important role as well. So there are mainly three types of glial cell in the central nervous system. Glial cells are known to have functions that help the function of neurons. However, recently there are many research uh, results that glial cells also play a crucial role in um, uh, the crucial role in the central nervous system. However, uh, we will um, not talk about that so deeply f uh, at this point of time. However, uh, we will cover uh, in this lecture we'll cover these main three types of glial cells and talk about how and show and learn how those cells look like and what the, the function of these cells are. So first let's uh, learn about neuron which is um, the main interest of us. This is how a neuron looks like. This is drawn by me so it's not a very accurate representation but it is a simplified representation of a neuron. There are s several kinds of neurons. Um, there, are, there are unipolar neuron or pseudo unipolar neuron, bipolar neuron, and multipolar neuron. This kind of neuron is this neuron. A bipolar neuron looks like this. This is the cell body. It looks like this. So, from the cell body, there are two main conclusions that uh, conveys or accepts information. A pseudo unipolar neuron looks like this. This is the cell body, like this. So, there is only one protrusion from the cell body. Um, and multipolar neurons look like this. So there are many, many partitions 
from the cell body. So, to look at the multiple amino, these parts, these short uh, protrusions that form outside, out of the cell body, is called dendrite. And this is the cell body, which is also known as soma. And this is the axon. And this is axon terminal because it is at the end of the terminal, end of the axon. Axon, axon terminal. So, um, first, dendrite has the function of accepting information from other cells. And the cell body is cell body, and this is the nucleus. The axon is the part where the information is conveyed out of the cell body to the other cells. And at the axon terminal, the, the neuron ha uh, makes connection with other neuron or other cell to, so that it can convey information to that cell. And at the, um, Boundary between the cell body and the axon, there is something called axon hillock. And there are many, um, synapses, which is the, um, connection between one neuron to the other. There are many, many synapses on the dendrite or even on the cell body. So, uh, this one neuron accepts information from hundreds and thousands of other neurons, and those information all converge in this part, the axon hillock. And then, um, after this convergence, the converged signal is transmitted right through the axon to the axon terminal, terminal so that the uh, converged information can be uh, transferred to the other neuron or other cell. And there is something called, something looks like this. This is called the myelin sheath. This is a uh, fat material that, um, that, uh, that is surrounding the ex parts of axon in order to, um, increase the uh, speed of transmission. So like the information can pass through like this, but it can jump through the sheath, jump, 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 so that it can uh, be transmitted faster. The mechanism of jumping is not that complicated, but I'll explain it later as I explain the membrane potential and action potential in future lectures. And the part that is not myelinated, where the part where the money sheath is not present is called the node of Frank Vier. Vier. So this is the money sheath, and this is, and this is both of node of Frank Vier. Uh, the thing that uh, makes the money sheath is different in central and peripheral nervous system. This is central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system, a cell called oligodendrocyte forms this myelin sheath. And in the peripheral nervous system, something called Schwann cell uh, makes this myelin sheath. Um, one thing that is different is Oligodendrocyte, one oligodendrocyte cell, um, creates multiple sheath. So, uh, the axon looks like this. So here's one axon, here's one axon. There's one oligodendrocyte cell here. And he from here, there's one sheath here. From here, there's another sheath here. So one cell can, uh, make several myelin sheath. And several neuron neurons. However, for Schwann cell, only 
one cell can form one mining sheath. So one mining sheath, one cell. Uh, the Shuan cell cannot make multiple mining sheath. And um, this is all about mining sheath. And the main component that uh, surrounds the axon with mining sheath is fat. Um, actually, in the previous lecture, I have mentioned about white matter. And I had mentioned that um, in the white matter, the axons and nerves are uh, concentrated on that region, so it looks white. The reason that the white matter looks white is because of the fat of the mining sheath. So the mining sheath makes uh, the um, white matter to look white. Um, this was about the mining sheath, and now, in the axon terminal, uh, there is another cell, like another dendrite, and it makes a connection with this dendrite to convey information from this neuron to this neuron. And here, the uh, connection that is made between the action, axon terminal of one neuron and the dendrite or the cell body of the other neuron is called synapse. And the process of um, transmitting information from the synapse is called synaptic transmission. And we will talk about this in depth later. However, for now, I will show you uh, the synapse in um, more um, more um, specifically. This is the image of the synapse. So. This is the neuron that has the axon, and the information is coming down here to another neuron, and this is the neuron that is receiving the information from this neuron. This called is this is called presynaptic neuron, and this is called postsynaptic neuron, because um, this is at the um, this is located after the synapse because the information flow flows this way. Um, here in the synapse there is mitochondria which as you all know this produces energy, ATP energy, so that um, the reason that mitochondria is here is because this um, this this thing is an active transport, which means that it consumes ATP. So a lot of ATP is needed in trans synaptic transmission. So there is mitochondria that forms ATP. So this um, little, little, little um, round object is something called synaptic vesicle. This sign of the vesicle contains uh, a substance called neurotransmitter. The role of neurotransmitter is to um, go out into the synapse, this uh, the space, the synapse space, and it really if it is released into the space, it bounds to the receptors that is located on the postsynaptic neuron. So here are many, many receptors for these neurotransmitters. And the receptors receptors are when the uh, neurotransmitter molecule bound, binds to this receptor, this receptor molecule uh, again triggers the um, triggers the uh, electric call activity that uh, goes down to the um, cell body and then converges it to the axon hillock and then when it is converged it again goes down to the axon of this new, um, neuron and so on and so forth. So um, the mechanism that this, uh, we are not uh, in depth talk about the mechanism that the neurotransmitter inside the synaptic vesicle is released into the gap. However, 
you can just know that the neurotransmitters are originally uh, contained inside the synaptic vesicle, but then it is released into the <laughs> this gap, and then after the uh, neurotransmitter can be dispersed along the synapse, it can bound to the receptor on the presynaptic neuron, and the receptors again trigger the electrical activity that can go down to the uh, cell body, dendrite, and then cell body, and the axon, and so on and so forth. So we will in the we will talk about this synaptic uh, transmission in the future lectures after we deal with the uh, membrane potential and electron potential. So you for now you can just know that there is something like this, and we will learn about this more in the future. Now, uh, as we finish talking about the neurons, uh, let us now talk about the gl glial cells. The glial cells, uh, as I told you just before, is mainly consisted of three types. One is astrocyte, and one is oligodendrocyte. It's microglia. And oligodendrocyte, we just talked about it just before, um, when we were talking about the mining sheath of neurons. And now let's talk about the astrocyte. Astrocyte is named astrocyte, astrocyte, because astro means star, and this looks like a star, so it is named astrocyte. This uh, black is um, dyed, and this black thing, this is an astrocyte. astrocyte. The main uh, function of astrocyte is to um, help the neurons, and the main um, thing that this astrocyte does to help the neuron is to form the blood-brain barrier. Blood-brain barrier. What this blood-brain barrier does is to prevent any substance from uh, going into our brain from the blood vessel. So if there is something toxic or something not appropriate for the brain to consume, the and if it is contained inside the blood vessel, the astrocyte, the blood-brain barrier formed by the astrocyte prevents those molecules, those substances, from going directly into the brain so that the neurons don't, don't become severely destroyed. So um, the astrocyte um, forms a junction with a blood vessel here. This is the blood vessel. And this is called the perivascular feet. And this perivascular feet becomes a blood brain barrier. And next, this is oligodendrocyte. And as I talked uh, told you before, oligodendrocyte is something that uh, forms mildly sheath and um, central uh, neurons of the central nervous system. And this is uh, the um, microscope uh, image of the cells of our brain. This A is the astrocytes, astrocytes, and these are neurons, 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 and this. The cell that looks like a fried egg is oligodendrocyte. The reason that reason that the oligodendrocyte looks like this uh, uh, fried egg is because um, when this is dyed, uh, we in order to observe the cells with a microscope, we do something dyeing with some. Um, pigments and the old as you as I told you before because mining sheath is mostly composed of fat oligodendrocyte itself it has many fat and is cytoplasm so when it is dyed uh, the uh, substances such as like uh, Golgi apparatus the mitochondria and the nissle substances is uh, is is goes out of the cell and only the uh, nucleus of the cell remains to be dyed. And in the cytoplasm there are many fats so it looks white. So uh, instead of the cytoplasm, uh, the materials, nissle substances that should remain in the 
um, cytoplasm like other neurons and astrocytes. Only the uh, nucleus and the fat remains in the cytoplasm as soon as the oligodendrocyte is died. Or the oligodendrocyte looks like this. Um, and as I told you before, when forming the mining sheath of uh, the neuron of the central nervous system, the oligodendrocyte can form multiple sheath and multiple uh, axons. So it looks like this. So there are many myelin sheath um, originating from the um, oligodendrocytes, one cell, single cell. And the third kind of cell is microglia. Um, the micro microglia is has the function of uh, immune system. So, um, when the brain is damaged or when a neuron dies, um, there should be an immune function to uh, prevent uh, further damage or um, to cure from the damage. Uh, originally, microglia looks like this. It is a very small cell with multiple partitions from a cell body. However, when the cell is activated to form an uh, immune function, it becomes it developed gradually into a cell that looks like an amoeba, and this uh, functions as a macrophage. So it, it eats up a uh, damaged um, debris of uh, bacteria or damaged dyed cell, or so it functions as a macrophage. So these are the microscope uh, slides of uh, microglia. So these originally the the cells are very small, very like with multiple partitions like this. But eventually it grows into a cell that looks like amoeba, an amoeba, so that it can function as a macrophage. This is an activated microglia. So uh, basically, this is all about the cells that consist of central nervous system and. Uh, from the next lecture, we'll more extensively talk about uh, the neurons specifically because um, the neuron ha ha mainly functions as the uh, information transmitter. And we, uh, from the next in the next lecture, we will talk about how information is formed in the neuron uh, by electrical activity. And um, we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.